the member for uh, Blacksland. Thanks, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Two weeks ago, a taped conversation between a journalist and management at the ABC surfaced. It revealed that an ABC article critical of his second-rate NBN was blocked by management because they did not want to upset, and I quote, the Turnbull camp. Can the Prime Minister advise the House if he or any members of his current or former office has had any contact with ABC management in relation to stories critical of his second-rate NBN? The Leader of the House on a point of order. Mr Speaker, this is a question wholly within the confines of the ABC. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the Prime Minister's responsibilities, and therefore he can't possibly Leader, answer. Leader of the House will resume his seat. The member for Watson will resume his seat. Everyone else can resume their seat too, including the member for Ryan. Uh, I'm going to ask the Leader of the House to repeat his point of order. I could not hear it through the interjections. If there's interjections, people will be leaving under 94A. The Leader of the House. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker. The question is about internal management practices within the ABC that has been alleged by a former journalist of the ABC. It has nothing whatsoever to do with the responsibilities of the Prime Minister, uh, and it, therefore it should be ruled out of order. No. Members on my right will resume their seat. The the member for Melbourne Ports will leave under 94A. The member, member for the manager of opposition business on the point of order. On the point of order, Mr. Speaker. The last part of the question goes specifically to the actions of the Prime Minister or his office, quite specifically to it. That is what is being asked. If the question was only internal to another organisation, it might be another thing. This is about the actions of the Prime Minister or his office in dealing with the management. Uh, the leader of The member for Perth will leave under 94 a The leader of the leader of the house on the further to the point of order. Mr. Speaker, there has been absolutely no suggestion whatsoever that any actions have been taken by the prime minister, either as prime minister or members as members on my of the left. Communications. And question time is not an expedition in fishing. It's not a fishing exercise. If the opposition has a, uh, a members on my left will cease to put to the house. Well, that is a different matter. But they simply can't raise uh, matters on, on the never-never uh, and expect an answer. It's not within the standing order. The member for Watson. The member for Gorton will cease interjecting. The member for Watson. Thanks, Mr Speaker. We're allowed quite specifically under standing orders to be able to ask about public affairs. We're able under the standing orders quite specifically to be able to ask about the actions of a minister or his office. This is squarely within the standing orders, and the actions of the Leader of the House in trying to suppress the question go to exactly why this is in the public interest to be asked. I've listened to both. I've, I've listened to the leader of the house and the member for for Watson. The last part of the question, uh, I don't think, is quite in order. I'm going to allow the member for Blacksland to rephrase it. Mm. Sure, sure. I, my 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 recollection of the of the question was that it it didn't ask. Uh, whether uh, there had been any action, it, it, it stated it. Now, I'll, the member for Lingiari is warned. Yes, I'm going to ask the, I'm going to ask the member for Blackson to read the final part of the question. Happy to, Mr. Speaker. Can the Prime Minister advise the House if he or any member of his current or former office has had any contact with ABC management in relation to stories? Critical of his second-rate NBN. I'm going to allow the question. Well, I, I, thank, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. I can uh, I can assure the honourable member that I have, on uh, several occasions, complained very publicly and openly about the ABC's coverage of the NBN issue. Uh, in particular, and most notably, uh, in the lead-up to the last election, where I felt the ABC's coverage of the issue was very poor and lack balance. And I said so publicly, and I've said nothing privately that I haven't said publicly. And my, 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 point, my, point, very, my point very simply, uh, the honourable member listens, I'll, I'll answer the question. My point very simply was this, that as we know in the lead up to the last election, there was a debate, a uh, discussion if you like, about uh, competing technologies. And, and the proposition that the Labor government presented was that 
the only solution, the only acceptable solution was to have a universal fibre to the premises uh, network, which was, which was their plan. And we counted and said we can get the thing, the project built, the network built faster, faster, and at less, faster and at less cost by using a mix of technologies, including using fibre to the node, as has been used in a number of other Member countries, the United States, the United the Kingdom, warning. Germany, Switzerland and others. And that was, that was in large part the, the debate really focused in large part on these competing technologies. In my view, and I said this, I was very public about this, uh, in my view the, the uh, ABC failed in its coverage of the issue because what it failed to do was to use its rather extensive international resources to at least go and interview people at British Telecom or Deutsche Telekom or Swisscom and test whether the arguments I was putting as the Shadow Minister for Communications were correct. They, could have, they, they, they declined to do that. And as a consequence, I feel in that regard, the national broadcaster, which I, I hold in high regard, as I'm sure uh, honourable members do, in that regard, it failed to put enough, it should have done a better job in putting more information about the competing alternatives before the public. And as the honourable member, honour, members will recall, uh, we went to some lengths to do that, to actually raise the level of, uh, of information and debate on this important uh, choice of technology. So yes, the honourable member is, the, the honourable member's question is, have I complained? Did I complain about this to the ABC? The answer is, Yes, I did complain, but I complained publicly. I was very public about it and made this point. Made this point. I've said nothing in any of my discussions with the chief executive at any time. I've said exactly the same things privately as I've said publicly, because it is important, in my view, Member for Gorton, in my we'll view, it is important that the national broadcaster, wherever it can, seeks to inform the public debate, so to ensure that Ministers. right or wrong. The contending arguments are well exposed in the light Prime of the Prime Minister's fact. time has expired. The member for Ryan. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Veterans Affairs. Minister, as you know, Ryan is home to many servicemen and women. What is the government doing to support ADF members and veterans and their families cope with the impacts of PTSD? And more specifically, Minister, will you advise the House what has been done to support the medical professionals who are treating those who are suffering from PTSD. The Minister for Veterans Affairs. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Let me thank the member for Ryan for her question and her cause for concern for our fighting men and women. The member for Ryan, of course, represents some 6,000 service men and women home at Gallipoli Barracks for the 7th Brigade uh, and some 2,900 veterans in her electorate. Uh, importantly, and for the information of the House, the member for Ryan is also the mother of a veteran. In fact, the last time I caught up with your son, I was with the member for Lingiari, and we were in the Middle East together. Uh, and I'm led to believe that in four weeks your son will deploy again to the Middle East. So if I can take the Liberty Prime Minister on behalf of the House, we wish him well. Can we thank him for his service? And can we thank you for being the mum of a veteran? It can be a hard road. The member asked an important question on PTSD. It's something that has always had a bipartisan view in the House, something that respective veterans ministers have worked together on the past, and I thank the member for Lingiari for his work and service in this and the previous government. Uh, the government's pretty proud of what we do, especially in non-liability care, where a veteran or a serving uh, soldier, sailor, air, man and woman who is struggling with issues of mental health can go and seek care and support regardless of causality. Uh, and the government will spend something like $180 million a year on that. Uh, the VVCS, the Vet Veteran and Veterans Family Counselling Service, has a superb electronic interface and provides over 80,000 counselling services uh, to veterans serving men and women and their families each year. Uh, you can also Google the At Ease portal on the DVA website, just Google At Ease, and up will come a range of online resources. There are four key apps for handheld devices for both Android and Apple, notably PTSD Coach, uh, High res The Right Mix and Operation Life. You'll also find there a range of resources for doctors. We have just released a range of resource called PTSD Psychological Interventions Program, which is an online training program that medical professionals can use and take to give them greater information about PTSD and the military experience. 
The department has developed this in consultation with Flinders University to ensure it's a great learning resource. Uh, likewise, on Mental Health Day in last October, uh, we also released the 2015-16 uh, Mental and Social Health Wealth Action Plan, which guides our measures for uh, the end of the financial year, and of course the 2015 Social Health Action Plan, which goes through the strategy for the next five years. Uh, there is more research to be done. We've also funded the health and wellness study as we continue to look into the effects of PTSD and mental health, not just on our serving men and women, but also on their families. Uh, so I'd encourage uh, all members to appraise themselves of the resources available online uh, so if questions are asked at their offices, they know where they can actually push some of our fighting men and women and the veterans to look. The member for Blackson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister, and I refer to his previous answer. Given his admission that he complained privately to the ABC, and given evidence that the story was dropped right. because of concerns by the Turnbull camp, and given concerns that the Coalition has about bias at the ABC, will he conduct an independent inquiry into this, just like he did about Q&A? Yeah. Yeah. Member for Karangamite. Member for Karangamite will cease interjecting. The Prime Minister has the call. Thank you, Thank you Mr Speaker. I, my understanding from reading about this in the media, as I'm sure the honourable member has done also, is that there was an employment issue between a journalist at the ABC and a manager in which the employee had tape recorded a discussion uh, with, the, uh, with his uh, manager, uh, and that this his contentions were rejected by the ABC management. The answer I gave a moment ago was not directed to any particular story of the, of the journalist concerned. I don't recall the article that's, that, that, that was apparently the subject of the Amendment tape discussion. I simply made the point that in respect of the ABC's coverage of the NBN issue, and this was essentially in the lead up to the last election, so this predates my being a minister, I, my view was, and I'm entitled to have that view, as we're all entitled to have a view about news reporting, that they could have done a more comprehensive job, a more balanced, uh, a more balanced approach, in which they took the advantage of doing a better, made a better effort of explaining the arguments about the competing technologies, which was, if you like, the factual context in the NBN broadband debate at the time. You know, is fibre to the node? worthwhile? Does it deliver adequate speeds? Is fibre to the premises the only way to go? I mean, in many respects, the debate has been resolved, the evidence is in, the multi-technology mix that the, the government is Prime taking Minister, has been Prime proved Minister to be correct. Prime Minister will resume his seat. The member for Grainler on a point of order. Of order. Members on my right will cease interjecting on a point of order. Yes, Mr Speaker. The question did go to the Nick Ross article and no, the, 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 the member for Brain Liberal went to Member for Brain Liberal State his point of fact, order. Her article member for Brain Liberal resume his seat. The Prime Minister is in order. Mr Speaker, I'm not about to run a commentary on particular articles on the ABC. Uh, that is a that is a the the there is all of us have had plenty to say about the ABC and I've had plenty to say about the ABC on the ABC, as the honourable member knows. So yes, I, I certainly did complain and uh, felt that their coverage could have been more comprehensive, as I described. Uh, I think it could have done a better job at informing the Australian people about the technology choices. But as for the rights and wrongs of uh, Nick Ross, I think it's the uh, journalist the honourable member mentioned, or indeed Emma Alberici, those are matters between the ABC management and Grover. the journalists in question and matters for them to resolve through the normal industrial processes. So the honourable member uh, should recognise that uh, in the free and open debate we have, all of us are entitled to express our member views for about the coverage of issues in the media, and all of us should continue to do so. And the honourable member's uh, attempt to suggest that somehow there's something um, untoward in complaining about coverage on the ABC, I think, uh, does, it does him a disservice. We live in a free and open discussion here on these big, on these big matters, and the ABC's coverage is entitled to be a subject to criticism as the people on whom it seeks to report.